How's everyone doing today? How was everyone's first couple of classes? Cool, we got some emojis. So far, so good. <laughs> Okay, we're just going to wait three more minutes. I think people are. Is Nasma frozen for anyone else or is it just me? She's frozen, it looks okay. like, yeah. Well, or being very sure. still. Or being very still. I just wanted to make sure it wasn't me. Okay. Oh. Oh, she lost her internet. Yeah. Okay. Um, oh, I think she's coming back. Okay. We'll give her a few minutes. Hi everyone. I'm so okay. sorry. My wife is very spotty today and obviously it's at the worst possible time. But if I head out of the session, then I promise it's not because I don't like any of y'all. And my laptop is going pretty slow. I'm just going to try to close some tabs. Am I cutting out still? <laughs> yeah. Okay, let me try to connect to my hotspot so that I don't. Do you want me to, in and out. to share the, the slideshow so that you don't have to do that? That might give you some bandwidth back. Actually, yeah, if you can do that, Kelly, that'd be amazing. Thanks. Um, so let thank me just grab awesome. it. Okay. Okay, awesome. I actually think that is it really oh just give me like, like is it really seconds. a zoom event with technical difficulties I just have to log into the drive yeah no worries for everyone who just joins Thank you so much for coming. Welcome to the Health Studies Orientation. We will pull up the PowerPoint soon. There's just a little bit of technical difficulties, but that is Zoom life. Can you see my screen? Yeah, okay. I can see your screen. Um, the only thing is that I don't know if it's still recording. Okay. Uh, I don't no. have the like record button anymore. It, it's still oh, no, recording. It is, it is in the still upper recording. Left. Okay. Okay. Yeah. We're good. Yeah. Okay. okay. Well, with that being said, it is 4:10, so we shall start. Hello, everyone, once again, and welcome to the 2021 Health Studies Orientation. Thank you so much for being here um, and for taking the time out to attend this orientation with all of us. Once again, my name is Nasma Ashraf. I am the president of the Health Studies Student Union and my preferred pronouns are she and her. So welcome warmly to everyone who's here. We can just go next. Okay. 
So before we jump into um, the orientation, we just kind of wanted to start off with a land acknowledgement that is going to be led by our health equity director, Chloe. So Chloe, you could take it away. Hi everyone, all right. So before we get started, I just wish to acknowledge this land on which the University of Toronto operates. For thousands of years, it has been the traditional land of the Huron-Wendat, the Senecas, and most recently, the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation. Um, this place that we are connected through is still the home to many Indigenous peoples from across Turtle Island, and we are very grateful to have the opportunity to work um, and live on this land. Uh, if you would like to figure out which um, Native land you personally are located on, you can visit the link I'm posting in the chat right now. Um, I also just wish to acknowledge that as a settler and especially as a health studies student, it is my responsibility to remember that the um, historical health inequities that are faced by Black and Indigenous peoples um, compared to non-Black and Indigenous peoples are a result of ongoing colonial violence and imperialism. So um, in terms of ways that you can support local Indigenous folks, there is an Instagram account called Toronto Indigenous Harm Reduction that I will put in the chat as well. You can follow it, boost their posts, and if you're able, um, their bio has information about how to donate to them. So thank you, everyone. Thank you so much, Chloe. Um, so before we jump into everything, I just kind of wanted to take everyone through like a rundown of what to expect throughout today's orientation. So we wanted to first start by talking about your support system. Um, that is going to involve a wonderful keynote from Dr. Weiner, who is here and is the new program director of the health studies program um, for this year onwards. And then we will also have an introduction to the HSSU, so not just myself, but all of, um, all of our team. So that's going to be exciting. And secondly, we have our program overview. So kind of like the nitty gritty of kind of what courses you need to take in the health studies program, um, kind of like a little mini breakdown of what kind of should be happening in order for you to kind of finish the health studies program um, in a decent amount of time, but obviously it's just kind of some suggestions that we have to guide you all. Then we're going to jump into core courses after our program overview. And while we talk about some of the core courses, we're going to, um, we have some health studies professors who have kindly joined us. So thank you so much. And they can kind of give like a little bit of an introduction of their courses um, and kind of what they do. So it'll be nice if you all kind of get to meet your professors right now too or probably like again, because I know some of you all have already started your courses. Um, and then we're going to talk about pathways through health studies. Oh wait, I think this is like, we kind of revised the agenda a bit, but then we're, we're gonna take a break, then do Kahoot, which is like a little game. It's not a hard, like, I don't know, questionnaire about the health studies program or anything, just to kind of get you all engaged um, and make sure, you know, y'all are not just, I don't know, having this like background music while y'all are, I don't know, out and about but it's gonna be fun. So I look forward to engaging with you all through Kahoot. And then after we're going to talk about pathways through health studies. So just kind of like where you can go in the future with your health studies degree, just some suggestions. Um, and then we're gonna talk about exploring some electives that you could take that are pretty interesting and related to health studies, um, followed by research and practicum courses, which we're going to talk about. It's a little bit more, um, kind of down the road, but we just thought we'd kind of get y'all started in terms of thinking about it. So you guys can best prepare for it. Um, and then number eight is staying connected with the HSC through social media, which is just us kind of plugging our socials so that you guys um, can stay updated in terms of our initiatives, things that we're planning on doing. And I guess it is um, a really good way to kind of keep connected with us online. And then we're gonna just kind of plug some upcoming events that we had in mind, followed by some breakout rooms with upper year health study students and games. Oh, also I thought I should mention, fun fact, um, we are taking an attendance in terms of all the students who are here. So you will be automatically um, kind of enrolled into this, uh, what is it called? Like a giveaway sort of thing. And so we will be giving away one free health study sweater to um, one of the attendees. So everyone who attended will be put into a draw. That's the word I was looking for. You can go next, Keely. Awesome. So the first thing we kind of wanted to talk about and emphasize um, was that you all have a very large support system. And 
I know that some of you all might have guessed that already, but I also understand that this point in time must be very stressful for you all due to kind of like the unpredictability of COVID as well as the U of T moving back to in-person classes. Um, so that's why we wanted to highlight one key takeaway um, from the many that there will be, which is that you have multiple avenues of support within the health studies program. Um, you know, we have a great program director who's about to say a couple of great words after this, as well as the health studies student union who's really here to represent all of your needs. And we are so honored to be able to represent you all. Um, and so we are here for you, as well as the UC program coordinator who's here, Jesse Chen, and your health studies professors, of course, always. So I just wanted to highlight that. Um, if you wanna come say, hi, Jesse, wave your hands, then that'd be great. Same thing with the health studies student union um, executives. And then after that, Dr. Weiner can take it away with this presentation. Okay, uh, do you mind uh, stopping sharing the other presentation? I can get mine going here. I can do that. Yeah, thanks. I also just wanna point out uh, uh, Kamala is here. He's the assistant to the VP, to the vice principal. And we are also lucky enough to have the vice principal, at least I believe she was here. Emily is also uh, on the call. Oh, there she is. She's waving very enthusiastically, as is Kamala and Jesse. They're all very enthusiastic. <laughs> um, and so they're great to work with. And, uh, you know, we're, we're, we really are your support system uh, through this program. So please don't hesitate to reach out. So, so I, I was asked to give a, a five minute keynote. So I'll obviously, as an academic, go for about two and a half hours. Um, just kidding. Um, let me get my PowerPoint going. It's a very short little PowerPoint that I put together here. So welcome to the orientation. Uh, I've met many of you and I've had a chance to work with uh, some of you in the HSSU. And it's really great to be starting my first year as uh, the program director here at UC um, and with health studies. I'm, I'm really excited to get into the building. Uh, I know uh, we're, we're kind of slowly transitioning back to in person, but um, you know, we want to make sure that we do that safely. So when the time is right, I, I look forward to you knocking on my door. Uh, whenever I figure out how to give directions to that office, I'll tell you it's a little confusing to me at the moment. So uh, that that's to, uh, to come. Um, so I just wanted to say, sorry, my cat's sneezing on me. I'm just going to push him away. Um, I just wanted to say, you know, this is a very uh, relevant time to be a health studies uh, major specialist. Of course, we have the pandemic that's going uh, strong still, uh, not only in Canada, but across the world. And so, of course, with the pandemic, there come all sorts of other uh, relevant health topics like mental health, um, isolation, uh, issues of isolation, you know, questions around the origin of, of this particular virus related to climate change and so on. But in addition to this big public health moment that we're experiencing. We also, of course, have other problems that have been uh, uh, very uh, much uh, on our minds for many decades now, like climate change and thinking about how uh, we can de develop a sustainable future. And what does that mean for health? So thinking about heat waves, thinking about uh, uh, you know smoke from wildfires in, in Western Canada, Northern Ontario that we probably all saw if we were here in Ontario recently. We're also dealing with aging populations in Canada, and that comes with all sorts of questions around social isolation and mental health, not to mention, uh, you know, how do we handle chronic disease in later life? Uh, and these are questions that come together in a way that uh, only students like you will really be able to answer uh, with some sort of comprehensive toolkit. I'm just going to move him to the ground. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> it's a little distracting. Um, so you all are going to be uh, working across many different disciplines and that's just gonna be an asset for you. So this is gonna set a foundation for you no matter where you decide to go, whether it's to grad school, uh, to specialize in something more specific related to some particular area of health uh, policy, to health practice, to clinical research, or actually being a clinician uh, or uh, if you uh, finish after your major specialist and go right into to work, working for perhaps a nonprofit or a government or um, uh, a company, that those skills that you learn here are really going to prepare you for what comes next in this world, where we really do need people who uh, specialize in health from a multidisciplinary perspective. Now, I just wanted to 
say quickly that we've got some additions to the program this year. So uh, in particular, we'd like to welcome Jason Sonnenschein, who's joined us. He's uh, a, a, a practicing or was a practicing uh, physician's assistant for many years in the United States. Uh, and he's joined us here in our program and we'll be teaching three different courses. You know, it's exciting to have him because he comes from a clinical background where he's been treating patients and working uh, in that clinical setting. Uh, and so it, it's it's going to be really interesting to see uh, what he adds to the program. And, and with those courses that I've listed here, Inequality and COVID, Clinical Cultures and Environments and Clinical Ethics, um, hopefully you'll have an opportunity to learn some new things that we haven't offered before in the program. I also wanted to just say welcome to Jesse, uh, who's our new academic services and program coordinator. So uh, she's going to be uh, someone you interact with a lot when you have questions about requirements or the specialist or major uh, in, in general. Um, and then I'd like to also say welcome back to all of our other health uh, studies instructors and staff. So uh, uh, Kamla, of course, will be somebody you work with for independent studies and practicum. But then Dr. Schluter, Dr. Lombardo are both here. I really appreciate you guys taking the time um, and, and others that will be teaching our health studies courses. We want to make sure that they feel welcome and hopefully excited to be back in the program for this academic year. Um, now, what do we expect for this year? Well, that's that's a very good question. Uh, right now, just in case it hasn't been communicated to you, I'm sure you've heard this a million times at this point, but we're in the online or hybrid portion of the semester. So these first two weeks are designed to allow uh, students to kind of transition back from an online uh, format into in-person. Uh, the idea is that after two weeks, we will be fully in person. Uh, of course, we uh, are aware of the complexity of all of this. And, you know, we're working very hard to make sure that this is as safe as possible. Um, you know, some courses, I will say, uh, for pedagogical reasons, are listed as in person, but are online. So you may have had one of these courses already. Your instructors should be uh, communicating with you why and uh, how that's happening. So if you have any questions about that in particular, just feel free to email me and I'm happy to chat more. Um, and finally, don't forget to up, uh, submit your uh, vaccination records to you check uh, at the website that I've got here. So if you haven't done that already, uh, make sure that you do that as soon as possible. Now, what do we expect for winter 2022? That's a great question and I don't know the answer to it yet. So we'll all be kind of improvising a little bit uh, as we learn more about what is happening with COVID in general and what the university is doing to sort of adapt to the changing conditions. Um, now, beyond this, I just want to put this to the crowd and say, you know, beyond in-person courses, and especially if we move to an online format, if the pandemic worsens over the course of the term, uh, I hope the HSSU will reach out to me about perhaps doing other safe in-person events. So uh, if there are opportunities for us to do gatherings outside uh, you know, things that may be less uh, uh, risky, uh, uh, talk to me and we can try to figure out ways to make sure that this community is able to interact in person because that's such an important part of your uh, undergrad ex experience. So lastly, I'll say, uh, I just want to make sure everyone knows I have an open door. So this goes for uh, instructors, staff and students um, and even Emily, the vice principal, of course. <laughs> so uh, everyone's welcome to uh, come knock on my door. I plan on being on campus at least a few times a week. Uh, and of course, you can always reach out to me via email or, or uh, Teams. So I'm always happy to set up a, a virtual chat or uh, to talk in person. I'm happy to, to meet you outside uh, if that also makes you feel safer. I'm happy to, uh, you know, always keep that conversation going uh, and, and discuss anything related to the health studies program as things come up. So with that, I will end my conversation. Uh, talk and uh, turn it back over to Nasma. I really appreciate you guys giving me the time to, to do a little presentation here. Well, no, thank you, Dr. Weiner, for taking the time and energy out to not just give a keynote, but also do like a very cute presentation. We really appreciate it. Um, but yeah, so after us talking about our support system and Dr. Weiner's keynote, we kind of wanted to get into talking about program specifics. Yeah. So now for the program overview that Kili can lead. I think you might be muted, Kili. 
sorry okay I guess like maybe the instructors can understand this but like when you start screen sharing your like panel to unmute yourself like disappears so let me just make sure okay um so just quickly my name is Keely I am the um, vice president of academics for the health studies student union and I'm just gonna give you guys kind of a brief overview of some of the program requirements and then also some of the core courses that we offer through health studies. Um, so we have our first year kind of um, column here. So as a health studies specialist, I guess most of you are probably coming in as your second year. So all that you would have been required to have completed would be um, one FCE, about 100 level course. And that's the same thing um, for majors. You have to have the one um, FCE. And then going into your second year, which I'm assuming most of us probably are going into our second year, um, you're required to take HST 209 and HST 211, as well as HST 250. And don't worry, we'll give you kind of a, a quick overview of what these kind of course titles mean, though I'm sure a lot of you are already enrolled in some of these courses. Um, you're also required to take PHL 281 or INS 200 as well as a stats requirement. So it's listed as STA 220, but you're also welcome to take um, PSY 201. And as a health studies major, it's the same requirements as the specialist. Um, and then you're also required to take um, one FCE of a 200 level course. Um, and this is where it's different for a health study major where you're required only to take 0 0.5 FCE of a 200 level course and that could be anything from ANT 208 to HMB 203 or 202. Uh -huh. I also, I can't see the chat so just let me know if, if anybody's asking any questions, Nasma. Yeah, Dr. Weiner was just saying that the stats requirement is much broader so there's lots of courses available and basically in exclusions to stats 220. Yeah, so for example, for myself, I'm doing like a sociology, like I'm doing a double major with health studies and sociology. Um, and so another option for me was to take like SOCH 202, which is a stats course in sociology. So um, there's a lot of options. You don't just have to take stats 220 because I know not everyone um, is super fond of math courses. Yeah, you can find all that information online as well as reaching out to, to Jesse, I'm sure. Um, and then going into the third and fourth year, health study specialists are required to take HST 310, um, as well as HMB 342, HST 350, and HST 450. Um, and then you're also required to take um, two FCE 300 level courses mm -hmm. and one FCE of a 400 level course. Um, and then as a health studies major in your third and fourth year, you're required to take HST 310, HMB um, 342, as well as one FCE of a 300 level course and 1.5 FCE of a 400 level course. Um, and then I guess specifically in your fourth year, um, you're just required to take 2.0 um, FCEs of any other health related course that you haven't pre previously taken. Um, and that could be anywhere from a 100 to a 400 level course. It just kind of depends on what your degree uh, requires you to still fulfill. And then as a health studies major, you are only required to take 0 0.5 FCE of any other health related course not previously taken. So um, kind of quickly going into the core courses because we mentioned a lot of them in those last two slides um, and that can be a little overwhelming sometimes. Um, so HST 209 is Introduction to Health, um, Determinants of Health and Healthcare. And I'm sure a lot of you are in that course now. And I do think Professor Lombardo is on this call. So if he feels comfortable unmuting himself and just giving a really quick introduction, I'm sure you guys would appreciate that. But I also don't want to put him on the spot. No, no, that's okay. that's quite all right. It's it's been uh, it's been exciting playing the student role here today and uh, having other people struggle with Zoom for a change. Don't worry, we've all been there. Um, yeah, so uh, I'm Anthony Lombardo, um, instructor for uh, HST 209. I recognize uh, many of the names in the participant list here today, uh, both students that uh, I just met uh, yesterday in our first class uh, and some that I've had in, uh, in other classes. So, although I don't know that I've actually got to meet any of you um, in person yet, so fingers crossed for this year. But um, 
who knows? Anyway, so uh, 209, um, uh, intro to um, health and healthcare, the determinants of health and healthcare, uh, where, we, where we lay the foundation for understanding health as something more than just an individual issue. And we think about and talk about and analyze how health is um, something that gets um, influenced by all sorts of other factors like social, economic, and, and political concerns. So try to get us out of that uh, individualized basis. Think about all of the other stuff that goes on that has an impact uh, on our health and, and think like, um, like health promoters and political economists and so on. So taking a very uh, critical perspective on, on what health is and what it looks like and, and more importantly, um, how we can change um, how we address um, health issues. And, and um, uh, as, as I said to my students uh, the other day, uh, you know, I've taught this course for a while, but the last few times is the first time I taught it in the middle of a global public health crisis. So it's, uh, I hope it's also the last time I teach it in a public health crisis, but um, it, it is, um, we're all sick and tired of, of living with and hearing about COVID, but it does illustrate so well uh, almost everything that we talk about uh, in the course. So it's, it's a very interesting time, I think, to be a student in health studies, and it's certainly a very interesting time to be an instructor in health studies, because um, everything we used to talk, uh, you know, somewhat in the abstract theoretical is now um, very much reality. So it's a very interesting time to be in a program like this. So um, I'll stop there. And it's uh, uh, nice to be here. Thank you for the invitation. And I uh, look forward to seeing my students uh, further this term. Thanks, everyone. Thank you very much. Uh, and not just to say this because Professor Lombardo is here, but HST, HST 209 was actually one of my favorite courses. And it really was the course that kind of introduced me to my like interest in health policy in general. So you guys are all really lucky to be able to have that course this year. Um, and then HST 211 is offered by um, Professor Brown and it is health policy in Canada. And again, I'm sure a lot of you are already in this course. Actually, no, I think it is, it's the winter course, but broad level overview, it, it really looks at health policy that is specific to um, Canada and Ontario and the specific um, kind of health services that are affected by that. And then HST 250 is Introduction to Research Methods in Health Studies. And it's offered by Professor Schluter, who I also feel like is here. And if he wouldn't mind coming off of mute to introduce himself, I'm sure that would be appreciated. Hi there. Um, I've been struggling to get myself out of this uh, circle for some reason that's appearing around me. I don't know how to change that setting. So I I'm guess I'm spotlighted. Uh, for you. Yeah, uh, I teach the uh, HST 250, which is the Intro to Research Methods in, in Health Studies, and if you, uh, all of my students who are in the class, and again, I see most of them on, on page uh, here as well, have just been through since, since we just finished class at four o'clock. So I've, uh, they've already been listening to, to uh, three hours of me talking about health and, and uh, definitions of health and, and how research is done about health. So they're probably already fed up with that. Uh, I won't say a whole lot more, um, except to, to say that it is one of the required courses and it's required for a reason because everybody needs a foundation in understanding research and how it's done, especially on health related issues, especially um, in the middle of a pandemic to understand the research that's going on about the conditions that we're living in and why we are making the decisions and why politicians and public health officials are making the decisions they're making uh, these days and what it, it's intended to do. So uh, it's an introduction to research methods for everybody, not just people who and want to become scientists and do research themselves, but for everybody who needs to understand research well enough to integrate it into their own life or at least integrate the findings and understand what the findings mean for their everyday life. Okay, thank you very much. Um, also, I am unable to see the participants list. So if I do kind of mention your course and there are other professors here who want to give a brief introduction, please don't hesitate to just kind of interrupt me. Um, but that said, I don't think Professor Holyoke is here. So um, he offers HST 310, which is a third year course on critical health policy. And this is kind of almost an extension for me anyway of HST 211. However, you kind of go 
a little bit deeper and look at how um, health policies are created and the internal and external mechanisms that are required to um, develop health policies in Canada. And then um, HMB 342, which is also a third year course, is um, epidemiology and it's offered by um, Professor D'Souza Kenny. And briefly, I'm not a specialist in epidemiology, but it looks at kind of the patterns um, and trends in the spread of disease. Um, Okay, and then we also have um, some electives. So we choose your own adventure. These are kind of the courses that you can pick to fulfill your degree requirement that um, are either a little bit more specialized or a little higher level than the previous core courses. So we have HST 308, which is Aging and Health, and it's um, offered by Professor Mirza, who I don't believe is here, um, but it looks at aging and health in the Canadian healthcare system and what that looks like. And then we also have HST 330, which is population health. And I don't know if Professor Lombardo wants to give a quick, or a quick overview again, or if he wants me to just kind of talk about it. Um, I, I, I'll do it. Uh, I'll even do it quickly, um, which is to say that um, population health, we look at uh, building on a lot of, of what we talk about in 209 and in your other courses, we look at um, continuing why some populations are healthier than others and, and the social determinants that go into that. But also, again, thinking about if we want to improve uh, health issues on uh, a population level, um, how can we do that via changing structures? So we spend a lot of time looking at structural interventions and, and how we can change contexts as a way of, um, of improving health. And again, that becomes very relevant uh, as, as Michael said earlier, when it comes to things like uh, social isolation and when it comes to climate change and the pandemic. And uh, as Daniel was saying as well, um, you know, it's important to know research methods because so we can understand the science, but we're also interested in why the science is being so wildly rejected um, right now by, by some, uh, some parts of the population. So we look at what are some of the ways that we can address those types of, uh, of issues. Thanks. Thank you. Um, and same thing with HST 350, Health Research and Practice. I don't know if Dr. Schluter, you wanna give a quick overview of, of that course? Sure. Um, <clears throat> HST 350 is is um, required only for specialists, but it is also available to majors and a wide set of students to take it. It's meant to be a, uh, a way to help students um, who either have an interest in a scientific career or don't, um, so that's by research and practice. So uh, to introduce students to professional issues related to health and, and careers in health. And to help navigate from sort of what we need to do to put a career together from health studies and where you're going to go next. So, and so it gives opportunities to help students work on things like their CV and how they represent themselves uh, and what their interests are and how to uh, broaden their interests if they want to. And uh, it's also um, so it's essentially geared towards helping you develop a career in some area of health studies, whatever that area is for you. Thank you very much. Uh, we also talk a little bit more about the, the research and practicum courses later on in this presentation. Um, we also have HST 405, which is a fourth year course offered by Professor Cortinos, and I really hope I did not pronounce their name wrong, um, and that would be Global Migration and Health. Um, we also have HST 410, which is case studies in health policy, and it's offered by Professor Daver and Professor Arakow. And I, I don't know if I saw either of them here, but um, okay. So we also have HST 440, which is health and pharmaceuticals, which is offered by Professor Olivieri. Um, there's also HST 464 is a fourth year course, which is the nature of international health. Um, and that's offered by Professor Hamill. And then we also have HST 305, which is perspectives in health, gender, ethnicity, and race. And that is also offered by Professor Souza Kenny. 
And then finally, not finally, but for, for this kind of presentation, we have HST 306, which is health, nutrition, um, and food security. And that's also offered by Professor De Souza Kenny. Um, so I'm gonna go to the next slide and I'm gonna hand it back over to NASMA. Yeah, so that brings us to our Kahoot game, but I know we did promise you all a break. Um, so even though it's not really at the hour yet, um, we can just kind of take like a three minute kind of stretching break if anyone wants to go, I don't know, grab a cup of coffee because I know it's been a long day for some of y'all, feel free to do so. Um, or just to kind of like rest your eyes and stop staring at a screen for a little bit, that'd be great too. And then I guess, actually, you know what, at 4.45, we will just come back and continue our presentation with a little Kahoot game. It'll also give you all some time to let the information marinate in your heads a bit so that we can have a competitive Kahoot game. <laughs> so see you all back at 4.45. Okay, everyone, welcome back. Hope everyone got a couple of minutes to stretch and kind of rest their eyes for a bit. I shall wait one minute for everyone to come back. And hey, so- wait, wait, can you see the screen? I've never shared Kahoot like this before. Yeah, I can share this. I can see the screen. <laughs> Joyce, is that how it's supposed to look? I feel like it's definitely not. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no. Okay. Everybody that's taking part in the quiz, just close your eyes for a second because I don't know if it shows answers. 
it does not so you don't have to you don't have to that. okay um oh you might have to sign into the um hssu account oh okay it, it's just uh, you, you use a google account yeah oh is it the same okay yeah i'm gonna stop sharing my screen for two seconds Actually, <laughs> yeah i'm gonna stop sharing my screen for a sec that'd be funny if we uh gave away all of our social passwords as part of the orientation, huh? <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't agree. Okay. Um, yeah, see, I'm law, oh, play, there we go. Okay. Um, host. Okay, I will start sharing my screen again. Okay. Awesome. So I think it's classic. Yeah. And it's loading the game pin. Okay. I haven't done this since high school, so. I know. Me neither. Okay. So if everyone can just download, um, not download, sorry, go on the Kahoot website and then type in that game pin so we can get the game started. Wait, we can't participate as HSC members, right? Okay. <laughs> I don't know why I was so ready. <laughs> All right, cool. Kaylee should get like a prize for being the first person to join. <laughs> right, not the director. I wonder <laughs> who that could be. I'll be really sad. I feel like if, <laughs> actually no, Rana, <laughs> you have to get all of all of the, the questions right if you're not the director. <laughs> Oh, also, while people are joining, um, there is a prize for the winner. And we are giving out a gift card. So I'm going to keep a little bit of it as a surprise, but that's just an incentive for whoever's just deciding to join. OK, cool. Let me know when I should start. Maybe give people like one more minute or 30 seconds. What is that noise? Oh shoot, that might've been my laptop, I apologize. Oh, okay, I thought it was mine. Okay. I feel like we should have like a few more people. There's only 10. I feel like we had like 22 people in attendance. I mean, minus us, HSSU people, professors, should we let them join <laughs> our Kahoot game? Or would that be not fair? Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> We've got some hard questions in there, so. Yeah, I'd be afraid of getting the questions wrong, so I'm not going to participate. <laughs> That's why you have to enroll under NASMA's name, and then nobody would even know. Yeah, I'm <laughs> regretting uh, signing up now. <laughs> no worries. What happens at HSC orientation? Kahoot stays in HSC orientation. Kahoot. I'm joking. <laughs> it's recorded for everyone to see. Okay. <laughs> How did I forget? And we will post the recording on the UC website so everybody yeah. can see. <laughs> 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 if you know you know okay okay dope so i think most people have joined already okay i'll get it started awesome may the odds be ever in your favor <laughs> okay so the fall the first question is which of the following is a core course this was mentioned a little bit earlier on. Oh. Um, Burhan, if you just go on the Kahoot website uh, and then automatically when you go on the website, you just have to enter a game pin and the game pin is on the bottom right. We can page. wait too. We won't. I know it's fine. I, I think I just sit on for now. <laughs> Are you sure we can wait if you want? Just 
Okay. Okay, so Sarah is in the lead, followed closely by Casey. Awesome. Okay, how many HSD courses do you think are being offered during the 2021 to 2022 academic year? Honestly, it was really hard for us to do uh, exact to count. <laughs> so. Okay, so Haley has officially taken lead, not the VP, follows close behind, and I have no idea where not the director is, but that's fun. Which of the following is not an HST elective course? That one was a hard one, I think. Yeah, even I stumbled on that a bit when I was mentally answering that question. Not the VP has taken the lead. What is U of T time? Great, it's good that everyone got that. Not the VP in the lead right now currently. Okay, this is a multi-select question, I think. <laughs> this is just to remind you all that we have office hours um, so far. Right now it's Mondays, one to 3 p.m. This is just to plug that. So please come by and say hi. Farhan said yes is the only right answer. Of course, Farhan knows. Okay, I guess Casey's now in the lead. This is an intense game. <laughs> Who can you contact for support? I talked about this a little bit earlier on. Which of the following is an equivalent to stats 220? There was one example that was given. Not that that is the only one. Oh, okay. What college is the health studies program offered by? Now y'all better know this. Okay, last question. In all honesty, I have no idea what the cowboy hat means. <laughs>
Okay, so third place is Amelia. Second place is Sarah. Awesome. And first place is Haley. Yay. Great work, everyone. Oh, and then we have the runners up, honorary mention, William and KM. So good job, y'all. Haley, um, if you can just kind of drop your email in the chat, you can either send it to myself or Fazila so that we can reach out to you for your prize. That'd be amazing. But thank you everyone for playing. We hope that the questions weren't too hard. Um, but yeah, back into a little bit more about the health studies program. Um, so a lot of people usually when they enroll in the health studies program, there's the obvious question of, well, what are some pathways that we can take um, after our health studies degree? And the answer is health studies is a very like multidisciplinary program and intersects with a lot of different topics and subjects. Um, in our health studies program, we have so many different people who are like majoring in such a different um, walks of study, like immunology, sociology, psychology, um, criminology, like it's very interesting. And that just shows that um, health studies is a very broad um, program, which is great because you can go into a lot of things. So some examples we have over here, um, you can go into epidemiology, you can study pharmaceuticals, there's health advocacy. Um, a personal favorite of mine is health equity, which I'm really interested in. Then you can also study indigenous health, bioethics, health economics, international health, health policy, community health, which I'm also pretty interested in, aging and health. There's a very interesting aging and health course that's offered in the health studies program too. Environmental health, health interventions, and health and geography. Um, and Daniela is just kind of pa uh, pasting a link into the chat of kind of like some career options that you can take after health studies, just in case anyone was kind of interested in um, having a little bit more details in terms of what they could do with their uh, health studies degree. Um, and we do kind of talk about this in HSD 350, I believe, um, in so much more depth. So if that is something you're interested in, then definitely feel free to join that HSD 350 course later on. And now Fazila is going to talk about exploring electives from other departments. Hi everyone, um, I'm Fazila. I'm the Director of Communications on the HSSU this year. Um, like Nazma just mentioned that health studies intersects with a lot of different programs. And because of that reason, the health studies department does accept electives from a lot of the other departments as well. So just to give a couple examples, uh, I'm sure you've heard already earlier in this presentation, it was mentioned that bioethics or indigenous studies. So PHL 281 or INS 200 are one of the courses required to be taken in second year. Uh, some of the other departments that courses are from that we accept are global health, anthropology and aid, sociology. Um, I'm sure that there are also other courses that can be accepted for electives if they are related to the health program in any way. So if you are interested in like inquiring if your course that you took can be accepted, you can always send an email to Professor um, Dr. Widener or also Jesse Chen who can help you out more. Thanks. Thanks for that, Fazila. Um... And now for the research slash practicum that some of you all might be interested in, we thought it would be best suited if Dr. Schluter kind of gave us like, I don't know, like a five minute kind of debrief in terms of the research and practicum courses, um, just so that you all can kind of have a little idea of what to expect as you go on to your upper year later on. Okay, thanks for Han, bye. Dr. Schluter, if you'd like to kind of take away Take it away. Yeah. Um, so one of the things that <clears throat> give a, a little bit of history, I guess, uh, probably about six years ago, we uh, discovered having done some uh, some surveying of students that one of the things, uh, what was good and what was bad about the program, we got a lot of feedback about students not uh, really having a good idea of you know where do I go from here? How do I turn my health studies degree into something? And worthwhile, and uh, we realized that we sort of hadn't done a great job, maybe, of 
helping students uh, make that leap and uh, really understand where how to apply their degree in different areas. And so we created these courses, this uh, uh, Health Studies uh, Practicum course and the Health Studies Research and Practice course to uh, help students navigate and figure out based on their interests, based on what the courses that they had taken, and maybe even some of the courses that they hadn't taken, what they sort of would be beneficial for them to do before they graduate and how to put it together in a way and how to package themselves and present themselves for graduate school application in whatever field they're interested in, whether that be nursing or going to medical school or becoming a physical therapist or uh, you know whatever area they're they're interested in and then sort of felt like uh, unprepared and not sure how to do a, a curriculum vitae and how to really write a good graduate school application and how to do good job interviews and how to uh, present themselves and how to argue that they know what they know and they're worth something and should be given the job that they're interested in and all of those kinds of things. And so we created this sort of set of courses to, um, to help students navigate that and to understand if you're more interested in a practice-based career, meaning either you know healthcare provision or healthcare policy or healthcare activism and advocacy, or if you're interested in, in research and in health research of whatever form, how do you get into those areas? How do you launch yourself? And so that's what we set up to do with these courses is to help students navigate those things. And so uh, those courses are designed to do that. And the, the uh, research and practice course, we spend a lot of time just investigating what are the different ways you can go with your degree. And students give presentations on all sorts of areas. Every year it's different, every year it's interesting what people are, are, are interested in doing. And then the opp opportunity um, in the fourth year, we have, you know, the health studies program has always had an opportunity for uh, students to do independent research courses. But we also created a way for students to do this independent practicum course where they can go out and get some basic understanding of what it's like to be a healthcare practitioner or to be a healthcare policy person or to be someone who does uh, health-related activism or or advocacy work and to go out and get some course credit for doing that. So spending the year learning about what goes into those careers in health and how they can get into them and what they'd be in for if they go and do it. And so that course gives students an opportunity to, to spend, um, and the, the mandate essentially is to spend about eight hours a week, uh, each week throughout the year, going out and learning what it's like to, to have a career in, in health-related areas and um, whatever that area of interest is for you. So they're really meant to be flexible and ways that you can explore things that you are personally interested in in the health field with the support of the program. And we also do a lot of in-course activities in support of that. So talking about relationships with, with uh, colleagues, with bosses and supervisors, relationships with clients, how these kinds of things work in whatever career area they're in. It's related to that. Um, but the bulk of the, the, the work for that course is in the practice and placement, not you know, wherever it is, whether it be at a hospital, in a hospice, in a homeless shelter, in a advocacy organization, in a research organization, whatever kind of thing you're trying to And it's been pretty successful. We've had everywhere from well, from five to fifteen students each year doing doing placements, and um, and I, I think they've been very successful. Um, maybe some of your students who are actually doing practicums this year. I'm not sure if I see anybody on board to really ask for it. Um, anyway, that's my my plug for practicum. Thank you so much, Dr. Schluter. Um, yeah, speaking of practicum students, I do know that Serena is here and she will also be in the breakout rooms um, to just facilitate some conversations too. So if any of the um, newer health studies students wanted to talk about 
uh, practicums, then she's definitely the person to go to right now. We also have another fourth year student here, Sahran, who's come to also help facilitate some conversations and breakout rooms when we send you all there in a couple of minutes. Um, but right before that, we just kind of wanted to plug our social medias. Um, the Health Studies Student Union is very active, not just on our email, but on our Instagram and our Facebook. We do have a Twitter. We haven't really gotten much engagement, but maybe you all can change that. So yeah, um, please do make note of this. We do post a lot. We reply to our DMs, our emails, and we also have a Discord channel. So if um, Daniela can just pop that Discord link in the chat for everyone to join. Awesome, thank you so much, Daniela. That'd be great. Oh yeah. So Dr. Weiner also said they're reserved for majors and specialists. So if you are a health studies major slash specialist, then you um, can join one of the practicum or research courses. Um, yeah, I think the only prerequisite is taking HSD 350, if I am correct. I, I was just answering Juliana's uh, question from earlier in the chat, whether these were competitive or not. So the, the research oriented courses, it's really about you going out and finding somebody um, to work with. And, and so that requires you to um, reach out to professors and talk about potential research projects. And and this, uh, as I understand it, is uh, these are skills you'll go over. Is it HSD 350 or 250, Daniel? Yeah, 350. 350, so, so 350 is really key in in launching into these 400 level courses um and then maybe daniel uh can you speak to the competitiveness i mean do, do you always have wait lists for 400 for the practice yeah, actually there there is no competitiveness at all frankly um the uh, well uh, let me put it slightly differently it's not that it's competitive um it, the the main thing is that we want you to follow your own interests so it's a self-motivated kind of thing. And we don't have a limit for how many students can be enrolled, or at least if there is a limit, we've never reached it. Um, so there's never been anybody barred from taking uh, the practicum courses or the research courses, as far as I know. Uh, the main thing is that we set up something that's going to be a useful course for you and you develop a relationship and you have the, the wherewithal to go out and, and find a place then if you're going to do a practicum and find a supervisor to do a research project with um, at the university. So it takes a lot of self-motivation, but it's not competitive in, in that way. I will add on a bit about the enrollment process. It's different from you, uh, you enrolling in the other courses, uh, you're adding them on ACRO. Uh, I actually can send the link in the chat. So once you go to our UC website at the bottom this, of this page, you will see a few, uh, a few sections about practicum or about independent research. So again, the main, the main first thing first, you'll find your supervisor. Once your supervisor confirm with you, then you will go to Kamla. And you, uh, first of all, actually, you, you can check the website and download the application page and then uh, send uh, your application package to Kamala and he will enroll you in the uh, ICRO. Uh, so that's from the enrollment perspective. So it's not competitive, like for other courses, we have limited spaces, but this one pretty much, you can decide when, which semester you wanna um, like start your practical or start your um, independent res research, yeah. Yeah, good point. Yeah, um, Juliana was just asking, because they're waitlisted for 350 currently, so they're wondering um, if that is typical and if they're likely to get in. Um, and then Effie said it is very common. Effie was waitlisted last year and got in the second week of classes. I don't know if anyone else wanted to add in on that. Yeah, HST 350, it sometimes does end up with a waitlist, um, uh, especially because with the changes in the last couple of years where they, um, even though we've doubled the size of the course, it's um, it's got a lot of interest. And so it, I have found that nearly everybody, what happens very often is, as I'm sure most of you students know, many students sort of sign up for extra courses that they're not really sure they want to take. And so usually a few will drop out in the first couple of weeks and then whoever's on the wait list gets in. It almost always happens that way, partly because many students sign up for 
you know, six or seven courses, even though they're only going to take four or five, and then they drop the ones that they like the least. And so it, it leaves a little bottleneck there sometimes. Um, but it's rare that we have to really refuse somebody to get into that course too. And usually everyone does get in. It may take a little bit of time because of that. Yeah, to Joanna, it's um, we will recommend you to stay on the wait list. So maybe later this month, other people will drop, and you will be able to move up and get into the uh, course. And also, uh, if it's your final year or your year four, there is a thing called Dean's Promise that um, if you're in your, in your you're planning to graduate soon, but you have one course that uh, like you need to take some course for your program re requirement and there's no other course substitution course if currency then can take place then you can um, request for Dean's promise so the procedure is ask Michael for his approval if he's okay with that I will start the procedure to apply for Dean's promise and it may take a few weeks for all the approval work and all like uh, um, faculty are other signs to approve that so if you're I guess it's uh, all the students are here are new students, so you're not your final year. But uh, in your final year, you if you are coming up with this situation, so better contact us as soon as possible, so that we can make sure that like uh, we have everything settled down during the summertime, so you can start your uh, fall semester getting in in that course uh, for the first week. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jesse and Dr. Schluter. Um, so. Now, with that being said, we're just going to kind of move on to the next slide, if that's okay. Um, yeah, so we just kind of wanted to plug some upcoming events that we were thinking of having soon and we were planning for. So we have the club fair that is coming up soon. We also have the, we're in the works of doing a um, kind of like a grad fair that we had kind of last year, but for the newcomers, you wouldn't know that. So um, look out for that. The date is not posted yet, and we didn't post on the upcoming events because it's still kind of in the process. Oh, and we did forget to <laughs> edit the slide, but we are having a grab and grow, go brunch in early October, but the details will be released on our social medias and you all probably receive like an email about it too. Um, this is also going to be our first, like the grab and Girl go brunch is going to be one of the first in-person sort of HSC events. So we're very excited for that. Um, it's just kind of grabbing some brunch, but it means a lot to us because uh, we haven't seen a lot of people in person for a long time. And last but not least, we do have some fall elections coming up for directionary executives near, well, originally it was the end of September, but we pushed it to uh, early October. Um, so with the directionary executive elections, we usually elect second year representatives, third year representatives, fourth year representatives, and then general members. Um, so look out for announcements coming soon. Julianne is asking, is the position of second year rep often competitive? If you don't get an executive board position, how can you still be involved with HSC? Yeah, amazing question. So um, in terms of second year representative uh, positions being competitive, I think it really depends on the group of students that you are with. Um, so for example, I know like it really differs based on the year and the group of people. Like, I think when I was in my second, no, when I was in my third year, I joined the HSSU and I remember running for elections as marketing director and there wasn't that much competition at all. But um, this year, when I was in my fourth year running for elections, um, we actually had like a lot more people running and a lot more people voting. So it really just depends on the group of people. I can't really give you um, an exact answer, but I do know that a couple of people do run. So it's not like there's absolutely no competition, um, but I obviously can't give you like a definite answer because I'm not exactly too familiar with um, the second year group right now. I don't know how excited people are maybe to join the HSSU or not. Um, but towards your second question, if you somehow, um, someone's interested in joining the HSSU exec team and does not get elected for a directionary executive position. We do have a mentorship program that we have recently introduced. If you can go to the next slide, that'd be amazing, Keely. Yeah, so you can apply to be a health studies mentor um, or a health studies mentee. So if you're in your second year, you can apply to be a mentee and you will essentially have a mentor that um, is kind of like 
mentoring you throughout the year, um, kind of giving you advice in relation to health studies, um, kind of linking you with resources, and that can allow you to kind of get more involved with um, the health studies community in general. Um, we might also take volunteers for some events down the road. So that's another way that you can get involved with the HSSU. Um, and then if um, you're an, kind of like an upper year student, so like in your third year, you can also apply to be a mentor. So Daniela, if you can just put the links in the chat, that will be great. Oh, and we also have positions for general members in the health studies student union. I think it's like one or two positions. So that's always an option too. And now we are going to put everyone in breakout rooms to meet some of the upper year health studies students. Um, these are just some question prompts and I'm going to start the breakout rooms. I do know that some people did leave a bit early, so I'm just going to assign people into, should I just do five breakout rooms? What do you all think? Okay, cool. Um, and I'm just going to let the participants choose a room. So if all health studies do union executives, um, plus Serena and Serhan, if you can just enter into at least one room, we just need one upper year student in one room and then um, everyone else can just kind of join rooms accordingly. Um, there's not really much difference besides the fact that we're all just upper year health studies students who are ready to talk to you, give you some advice and have a good conversation. So I'm starting breakout rooms. Do you I'm all gonna, see that? I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. Oh, sorry. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and recording if that's good. Yeah. Okay. I'm assigning some people to some break. Hi, Haley. Ooh, I need to stop recording this. Uh, continue recording now. Okay, yeah, because I was wondering, I'm like, is this still recording me when I'm in the main room? <laughs> it was just me alone. No, I think it would have recorded me, but I stopped recording because I thought that that would be kind of boring. Yeah, no worries. All right. Um, I'm going to wait till everyone comes back. I will start sharing my screen again. Yeah. Um, okay, so everyone is coming back. Welcome, welcome, everyone. How was your breakout rooms? Good. Let's get a thumbs up if you had a good time. <laughs> awesome. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to call everyone back um, before we kind of ended things off because this does bring us to the end of our orientation. Um, so thank you to everyone who came. If you were in attendance, your name has been entered into a draw to win a free health study sweater. It kind of looks like this with like a little logo I wore it today to represent, um, but it's not this exact style because there's different um, styles and all that. So if your name is selected, from the draw, then you will be emailed by our lovely Fazila. Oh, okay. Well, perfect timing for your battery to run low, Keely, because we are um, eventually kind of essentially done. So yeah, thank you so much everyone who, who came. Thank you so much, Emily. Um, thank you so much to the HSSU, everyone who is still here, Keely, Effie, Daniela, Chloe, Joyce, um, Fazila, who I think left and Serena and Sahran for helping us facilitate some great conversations. Um, let us know if you have any questions. Our email is healthstudies at gmail.com. Um, so if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to reach out to us also on our social medias. If you can go back to our social media page. Yeah, thank you so much, Kelly. Um, that is probably your best way to reach any of us. Also, I'm having office hours Mondays, one to three. So until then, see you all soon. And thank you for coming. Welcome to the health studies program, everyone. Bye. Thank you, Nasma. <laughs> Thank you, Keely, for supporting me when my Zoom issues or my internet issues. It's okay. Was I'm awful with technology as well, so.
Okay, I'm going to leave now, but I'm going to stop sharing and recording first. Okay, cool. Okay. Thank you so much, Kelly. Okay, yeah, of course. Okay.